It's been the honor of my life to succeed Reverend Troy Perry, who was the founder and first moderator of Metropolitan Community Churches, and he provided a lot of wonderful guidance and as a role model for this important position in our growing and changing denomination. And I'm so grateful for his personal uh, continued support and love and for being a part of changing lives and changing history as part of Metropolitan Community Churches. I was installed as moderator of Metropolitan Community Churches in late October of 2005 at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., which was an enormous and wonderful honor. And I'm so thankful to the people who made that possible and for the more than, I think, 12 or 1,300 people who were present in the cathedral that day, as well as uh, hundreds and hundreds of MCC clergy and clergy from other denominations. Um, there were rabbis and an imam and uh, people from different faith traditions and so many MCCers who showed up and took buses, cars, and drove to be there at that important time of transition in our denomination. I think about that moment and uh, I remember walking down that very, very, very long aisle and being the last person in a very long line and feeling a sense of, first of all, uh, the tremendous support and love that was being poured out at that moment and also a little sense of uh, awesome responsibility that was there in that moment. And I will never forget it and I return to that. <clears throat> My sermon was an unfinished calling for MCC and I still believe that MCC's vision and ministry is unfinished in a world that still needs so much hope and so much justice, love and peace. The role has to do with the spiritual and pastoral leadership of MCC worldwide and being that spokesperson on behalf of our movement to the world in terms of our life-giving ministry, in terms of our mission and vision and values in terms of our being the voice in the Christian context, in the faith context, about what it means to reconcile sexuality and spirituality, what it means to integrate them, what it means to be all of who we are and to bring the message of God's justice and love for all people. And so I think that's the first thing is understand that there is that role, but also there is a job. You are the CEO of a corporation, of a nonprofit corporation that is spread all over the globe and growing. And I think my gifts as a pastor, uh, the gift of being an unanxious presence in the midst of change, in the midst sometimes of crises, is very important. I think being a person of strong faith, a person who of strong values, who uh, I know what I believe, I know um, who it is that I believe, I know who it is that has placed me in this position with uh, your trust and help as well, that I, I think knowing those things are very important gifts. I also think that to be moderator of MCC, you have to be able to change hats. <laughs> when you're managing um, a process or leading the governing board is different from leading the staff, the senior staff, different from being a, a spokesperson, having television cameras facing you or, or uh, speaking out on Huffington Post or uh, in the Washington Post or, or speaking at a, a meeting in Europe or at a gathering in Latin America. Being able to relate to people who are very different, uh, who speak a different language, have a different cultural background, but finding the common connections that are human connections and our connections around our faith and our passion, around the radically inclusive love of God that we preach. When you can find your connections with people, it, it's amazing and it really is inspiring. I think looking at the what are the barriers to growth and to receiving our message, my experience is that so many people are captivated by how we do worship and by how we have a very contemporary and relevant uh, and uh, fresh anointing uh, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And how is it that we can make that more accessible and available to people all over the world um, who may not be ready to organize a local church yet in their setting, but who really want to connect? And we're wrestling with ways to do that. The opportunity I have to come to churches for various reasons to preach and to share 
the good news of things that are happening in MCC around the world and to help cast a wider vision. Sometimes we can get very narrow in our focus in our local churches and their successes or problems become the be-all and end-all, but we are really part of a global fellowship and sometimes it's so refreshing to remember that and I love being the ambassador of that, the evangelist of that. to evolve a strategic plan for MCC that helps our churches grow, churches that are stuck at plateaus, churches that have declined, churches that struggle to have the right leadership in place. What is the partnership between the denomination and our local churches that can really help local churches become all they're called to be in their community? It's been a joy to share with you some of my thoughts about the next moderator of Metropolitan Community Churches and about my own journey through this time. God bless you and everyone who is in a process of prayer and discernment for our denomination as we go forward.